Hi everybody, this is Miss Cox Tech, and today I am showing you how to comment professionally on blogs. Now, as we start practicing commenting on blogs, we're actually going to begin by helping other students with their grammar. So today, you're going to be the grammar police, and your job is going to be to serve and correct. That's a little silly, but you're going to be serving your classmates by helping them correct their work. Um, this is not about making your classmates feel bad. It's really important that we help support each other as we are publishing work online because the fact is everybody makes mistakes and it's really helpful when you have friends looking out for you that'll let you know, hey, you know, you messed this up, make sure you fix it before you have a ton of people around the world looking at your work and then making judgments about you. So let's get started. To get to your classmates' blogs, you're actually going to go to the Miss Cox Tech site and click on the Blogs link. Once you're there, it'll actually pull up a list of everybody's blogs, and it's organized down here by period. So my example today, I'm going to be using Jeremy's blog. So I'm going to grab Jeremy's blog, and all I have to do is click on the link, and it will open up his blog. Now, it's important that you've already signed into Blogger before you do this because you're going to need to comment on other people's blogs and in order to do that you need to be signed in. So up here I'll see it has my name or I'm sorry my email address up here showing that I've signed in and it, there's a sign out button saying hey you're already signed in you can sign out. So what you're going to do is you're going to be the grammar police. We're not going to comment on anything else today except for grammar. So I'm going to take a look at Jeremy's post here and I'll zoom in even more. So we can take a look, and I'm going to leave one comment about an, a mistake that he's made. Because the fact is, we all make mistakes. And actually, I've already left a comment here, um, and I, if we click on one comment, you'll see the comment that I left. Um, I've left a comment on his um, font. So he chose a font that's kind of all capitals or all lowercase. It's a little weird. You can't tell the caps. So that should be changed because you want to be able to show that you're using proper capitalization. So let's take a look at this. It says, launch night. Hundreds of people gather around and chatter fills your ears as you wait patiently for the doors to open. Registers begin, or sorry, registers being overwhelmed with cash of fellow gamers. I am talking about Call of Duty ghosts. Okay, now I'm going to comment on this because I see this mistake come up several times. If you're using a game title, a video game title, movie title, book title, um, you're always going to italicize it instead of putting it in quotation marks. So in my comment, I'm going to add down here, and by the way, to get to comments, all you have to do is click on no comments, or if it says one comment or two comments, you click there, the comments will pop up, and a comment box will pop up. I'm going to type in, um, game titles should be italicized uh, not capital or I'm sorry not capitalized not um, put in quotation marks and then I'm going to ask that when we're making little grammar comments to help our classmates that we're gonna, going to tag with hashtag grammar police that lets the person know that that's the goal of this comment. It's not to make them feel bad. It is just to let them know, hey, this is something you need to fix. So if you're correcting their grammar um, with capitalization, punctuation, spacing, even if it's spelling, you can put grammar police. Go ahead and put hashtag grammar police at the end. Now when you're commenting, you'll see I've written a complete sentence with a capital letter at the beginning. I put a period at the end. And I've used correct grammar in my comment. These are all important things to do. Lastly, I'm going to go to publish. Now, if this is, um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. If this is a comment that I want to hear back from Jeremy on, I might want to click notify me, which means that when somebody follows up to this comment, if he replies, I'll get a message saying, hey, Jeremy replied to me. But since this is about grammar, I'm assuming Jeremy is going to fix this and then probably delete my post, which is fine. So these grammar comments, you don't have to leave them posted. I would fix the issue and then delete the comment. The goal of these is to help you fix your writing and improve your writing. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and click publish. I'm not going to click notify me. 
and it'll ask, hey, please, pr please prove you're not a robot, and you'll have to type in this weird thing. It looks like mine is, ooh, that's hard. Maybe it's N, no, R, L, V, R, E, X, and then 6094, I'm not sure. That's really hard. And sometimes they're really hard, and, oh, I got it, okay. So now you'll see your comment will pop up. And I have an image attached to my user account. We can add images to yours later. But um, for now, you don't really need an image. Don't worry if you don't have an image there. But you should see your comment with your name, pop up, the date, the time, and then your comment. There'll be a reply option and a delete option. If you realize, ooh, I didn't type that out correctly, maybe you made a mistake when you were typing your comment, you can delete it and type it again. Okay. Before you post a comment, make sure somebody else hasn't written the same comment. It's a little awkward when somebody's got five comments that all say the same thing. Other than that, that's what we're going to practice today. So go ahead, start with commenting on your group members' posts and giving them some grammar feedback, and then you can comment on anybody else in class. Okay? Thanks for watching this video.